Welcome back to the channel guys. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to wire up this power meter. It is a PZEM-022 and it shows you all kinds of stuff like power, current, wattage, and all that good stuff. And I'll show you guys more of that later here in a bit. Stay tuned. Okay, so I have the frame here, or the cover of a junction box that I got, and I'll show you guys that here in a bit. And it's got holes for three of these. One of them is already in here. This is gonna be used for my generator to find out how much power I'm drawing there when I have the circuit breaker turned on. And I got a couple more as well. So when you buy these, the link will be in the description. These work really well. I haven't had any issues with the generator ones. And when you get one of these, by the way, make sure you get one that has a current transformer that can open and then snap close around a wire like this one. As you can see, it has a little clip on the side like that. You lift that up and it opens up like this and you can wrap it around a wire. If you didn't get one of these, you're gonna have to either remove the wire, slide on the current transformer or cut the wire or something like that. That's a lot more work. Get one of these, they work really well. So we're gonna show you guys how to wire this up, okay? Now, there are a lot of how-to videos on how to wire these up to different projects and do-it-yourself things and little projects with solar panels and all that good stuff. However, every time I tried to look up how to connect these or wire these up to circuit breakers, there was no video like that. There were pictures on Amazon reviews, but no videos on maybe how to do that exactly. So that's what this video is for. Hopefully, it'll show you guys how to do it in a nice, safe, quick and easy way. Okay, take a look here. This is the junction box that I got off of Amazon. And I'll put that link in the description too. It fits perfectly for three of these. You just have to space them out, draw it up, and then cut them out into the shape of your power transformer or not your power meters. And pay attention that these don't really have much of a lip on them. So don't cut such a large enough hole where this isn't going to hide any of the imperfections. So they're gonna fit in pretty tight. They're gonna snap in place and that's in there pretty good. It's got these clips on the sides, two on this side, as you can see, it's left open in the middle so you can put your wires in there. This one is just one little clip here and that puts uh, plenty of resistance in this frame here where they're not gonna fall out, okay? This goes on like this later. I'll show you that later. It has four screws on all the corners. It also has a few different holes on the inside in various places for other future projects or different projects. And it comes also with these, I don't know what they're called, uh, holes, hold nuts or something. Basically, you put this on an end of a wire and then you feed the wire through the hole. And then when you cinch this down or screw this down tight, it'll actually squeeze these here It'll squeeze these so that it tightens around the wire and makes it a nice and tight fit where the wire is not going to pull in and out. It's got a little rubber O-ring or grommet in there that will really give you a nice good grip on any wire that you put in there. Obviously here, as you can see, I already have a current transform from the generator on the generator wire. It's loose because these are thin wires, so they're not going to work so well for thin gauge wires, but this is inside. It doesn't really have to serve any waterproofness uses. And I already went ahead and routed some electro wiring. So what you're going to need to do, if you're gonna do it like me, that since my circuit breaker has an A and a B line like this, as you can see, and this is the neutral, they feed out from the outside here. You get two wires right here. So basically I wanna check what current and power is going through each of these. So you're gonna need two of these electrical cables or electrical wiring, standard home outlet wiring, whatever, to feed each of these that you put on. So I already did that. I fed it through this hole. They don't, this box only comes with four of these. So unfortunately I have to make do with what I have. Two of them barely fit in one hole cause it's such a small hole, but that's in there good once I cinched it down. This one is for the generator. So that can be by itself on its own way down here. But anyway, there's no current or power on with these. I just put lock nuts on there to kind of show me what wire is what, where I'm going to route it A or B. And uh, yeah, just to have, you know, good safety here. So. Route it into your box how you want. I place the box low here on the panel versus up high because I plan to put the current transformers low down in this area, not way up high, but you do it however you want, what makes sense to you. I already had some studs here, so it was easy to fix this. I just added this one more board to make it a little bit wider to fit. So once this is all in there, then what you wanna do, we'll go ahead and do this generator one. You wanna make sure you don't have any power going in to these wires while you're plugging them in. Because if you do, you're going to uh, pop these or break them. They're, they're going to set off a breaker inside and they won't work anymore. 
ask me how I know. Here's the generator wires. You have the white and the black, obviously, right? So if you look on the back of these PZEM power meters, you have the top two is for your CT current transformer right here. Doesn't matter if it's red or black or black, black and red, just make sure they fit in the top two because they don't really describe here what exactly goes in each one. And then here, the third wire down or the th third screw, that's going to feed from your load side, which is going to be the black wire then, right here. And then the fourth screw here is going to be your neutral, which is your white wire, which comes after the load. Okay, so let's go ahead and wire that up. By the way, the reset button is on the right, so this is gonna be oriented here, and this is gonna look upside down for you then when you're looking at the schematic, but you should still be able to follow through with that. So we'll go ahead and put the wires in, and then I will show you how that all looks. Now you don't wanna strip off too much insulation because these are the wires will not fit so deep into the power meters, okay? You're gonna need a thin screwdriver like this, okay? And just tighten down these screws once you have the wires in there. Make it nice and snug, you don't want those to come out, especially when you start bending things around and trying to close the box. But as you can see, that's in there. So black wire on the third terminal, I mean, we're counting one, two, three, four, and the white one all the way at the top. And then I've already kind of had this generator or this, uh, let me show you. And then I already had this current transformer here. These two black and this black and red wire are connected to my circuit breaker switch here. You're gonna have two poles on there. So I just put this around both of them because I wanna know the total output power from both of those when I have the generator on so I know that I'm not overloading the generator. So I just clipped that around both of those wires, ran the feeding wires here through the hole so that it comes into the box. And then you just kinda have to make sure you have enough slack. If you don't, you're gonna have to add some pigtails probably to these wires. And I don't know if that's going to affect the measurements at all or anything but I'm not going to add jumpers as a little bit snug, but I think it's going to fit fine. And then I won't have to worry about dealing with it later if it doesn't work right because of additional wire. But I don't think that will affect it too much, honestly. But you guys might find information on the internet about it if you research it. I didn't research it because I don't plan to add any jumper wires to it, okay? By the way, I do have a degree in electronics and engineering, not a qualified electrician though, but this is simple enough and basic enough that I think anybody with a little bit of, you know, hands-on experience can figure out. And I'm having a little bit of trouble trying to get that wire to stay in there because, um, let me show you here. These little tabs here, they move up and down and like if you have the screw loose and it's kind of down like this, they're going to like fall back in place. So I kind of have to really make sure that the wire, here I'll show you guys on this one. I'm gonna unscrew this here real quick. All right, you see I just unscrewed this here. Let me turn it upside down. Now you can see this one is open. If I turn it this way, they close shut. So that's the issue I'm having, but you wanna make sure that the wire fits in the hole here. And then you cinch this metal plate down with the screw here, okay? So we're gonna try that. Okay, let me show you guys what it looks like. As you can see, these wires are in there and they're tight. They're not coming out. That's what it should look like, okay? I'm going to do the rest with the other two and come back to you guys here in a bit. All right, just to show you guys again, maybe because I have a chance here to slide these in. It's quite simple once you have them cut as far as the cutouts for these. They just snap into place as long as you have the right dimensions in there. So I used a file as well to kind of file off the rough edges. So that'll go in there like that. And my other one right here, let's get out of the packaging and that'll slide in here like this, okay? I can't really turn it around. Maybe I can turn it around, here you go. There you can see they all snap into place. They look pretty neat, nice evenly spaced out. I'm gonna put labels here eventually, line A, line B and generator here. That way you know what is what and what you're looking at when you turn on different circuits. So I'm gonna go ahead and wire these up and we'll talk to you guys in a bit. All right, as you can see, I've got all the power meters wired up correctly now. We've got white, black, red, black, white, black, red, black, and so on. 
You want to tug on these a little bit, make sure they are in there good. This is a little bit tight because I have not so much slack on this current transformer. But yeah, I slid the current transformer wires through this hole here. And you probably want to space those out appropriately for you so that it gives you the most slack. And then we'll have to make sure you have these on the right breaker. So this one is going to be my B, this one's my A. So I already labeled these here, A and B. Let's go ahead and route it on. Now, I think in one of the pictures, I noticed that this wire is basically in the direction of the electricity. I don't know if it really matters how to put these on, but I'll do it like the photo and hopefully be all right. It's a little bit of a pain for me to try to get this in there because these wires are very stiff to get my fingers in there and bend them around. There we go, see? And then you just clip it in until it clicks like that, you see? And we'll do the same for the other one. There you go. You hear the click? That's good. Now when I put the panel on, it's gonna push on this. So you wanna probably try and do the best you can to make things fit in there good. And I think that'll be fine. These wires are so stiff, it's hard to uh, move them. So anyway, everything here is now set up properly. You got the, the power cables and everything going in where they should go. All the current transformers. Let's see, make double check here. This is my B and that's my second one and A is on top. A all the, I'm just double checking here. A is right here on the outside. Okay, let me show you this A and B that I'm talking about. So the wires come from the outside and go into the main breaker here, right? A and B. And so that's what I wanna check because they're gonna be powering up each of these channels, okay? Okay, next up, let's go ahead and talk to you about how to wire up the wiring or the electro cable to your circuit breaker over here. Okay, let's go ahead and show you how I'm wiring these up now to the circuit breaker. This is B, this is A that went through my circuit breaker and out and back into the black box over here to power up the power meters. So the white wires, it's quite simple. The neutral over here is connected to these bus bars on the right and left. And so if you look back in there, let's see if we can kind of show you a little bit. But if you see that down in there, I got the two white wires right here on the bus bar, okay? Now the black ones is not powered. Make sure you stay not powered this whole time or else you will blow your power meters. But this is going to be A and this is going to be B. And I'm going to put them in this circuit breaker. This is going to be A and this is going to be B. This circuit breaker turns on and off my sub panel. So I always plan to keep this on. And then if I want to turn off individual breakers on the sub panel, I'll just go do that directly. It also has its own main switch as well. So what you want to do is turn this off and then loosen this screw here and take this wire and put it in there. Same for this one here, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and come back to you guys in a little bit. Okay, we are back. Again, B right here into B here and A right here. I already turned the power back on. Now you wanna just pick pretty much any circuit breaker like this, I think. Even if you have an empty one, that's even better because then you have a slot where you can just add a circuit breaker like this and just wire up directly without affecting anything. Now I'm going to have an A and a B, right? So these are alternating A, B, A, B on the whole panel. They make like a S shape like this. If you open up your panel and you see the diagram, you will see that. So let's take a look at the power meter now that this is all connected. All right, take a look at that. I'm going to take these film protectors off for you guys so you can see that better. Hopefully, probably still going to have a glare. Take a look at that, guys. There you have it. For each one of these, you get six data points here. So you've got voltage, current, power, energy, frequency, and power factor. So running 120 volts basically on both lines, which is good. And I'm drawing over eight amps on line A and about six amps on the other one, seven. It's just gonna keep fluctuating based on what you're using in the house at the moment. 914 watts on channel A, 934 on the other one. So that's good. That tells me that since I have a 7,500 watt generator that uh, at nighttime I can probably leave the whole, all the circuits on the circuit breaker on and still be able to run the whole house perfectly fine. I'm not running a lot of lights, obviously. It's late here right now, so lights are off. We're not cooking, TVs are off, things like that. Now in another video, maybe I'll go over these reset buttons, but if you click on and off, that just turns the backlight on and off if you don't want the backlights on. 
If you want them on, just go ahead and click them on. And yeah, there you guys have it. Let's go ahead and screw this in. Make sure that none of the wires are really pinched. Go slowly here so you don't like break any connections. And this comes with, oh, by the way, I almost forgot. The box comes with this. I'm probably just gonna go ahead and put that on real quick because it's either that I throw it away and I'm not gonna use it. This is for weather sealing of keeping the rain out. So it'll go around here on the backside and seal up nice and tight here so that you don't get any moisture in there. So maybe I'll do it anyways. Who knows what kind of little tiny bugs might be able to get in there or something, create spider webs or something like that. So let's go ahead and just add it. You guys don't have to if you don't want to. If yours doesn't come with this, no big deal. Okay, as you guys can see, the white rubber seal here goes in super easy, goes in this groove here and that's going to do the sealing. So let's go ahead and put this on. And by the way, this is my generator. Obviously it's off because the circuit breaker is off. You cannot have the main and the circuit breaker one on at the same time, but that will come on when I turn the breakers off. These will go off and this will come on so I can see how much wattage I'm using. Okay, so let's go ahead and put the screws in. It's quite simple. Put them back where they came out of. Okay, looks good, right guys? All right, there you guys go. I hope this video helped you out, it showed you how to wire this up. Everything's working perfectly, had no uh, injuries or anything, everything was safe. Make sure you always be very careful when you're messing around with electricity, especially with your circuit breaker. So if you guys like this video or have any questions, click the like button, leave a comment. I'll try and get back to you guys as soon as possible. Hopefully I didn't leave anything out that was too complicated. And if you don't like the video, go ahead and click that thumbs down button twice. We'll see you guys next time. I'm gonna go ahead and put the panel back on and then enjoy the new setup.